guys, it is I, it is 21 Maxwell with the final ever TW2013 video. We are going to go on hiatus for a massive week before we are back with some TW2016 content. But we'll get to that at the end of the video. We'll crack on with the final show, which is We Are Wrestling. We're back again for the final time. Um, our event at the end of January 2017. Hopefully we have a good uh, show for you here. Hopefully we get out in a bang. And as I say at the end of the video, we'll crack on with some uh, discussion regarding what is in store for TW 2016. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Let's dive straight into it. As we are wrestling, we're back again. So we start the final ever episode of We Are Wrestling with lots of pyro descending from the small Sir Matt Busby Centre in Bells Hill, Scotland, and we head over to the announce team for this evening, the voice of We Are Wrestling, Billy Kirkwood, and the general manager of We Are Wrestling, Nigel McGuinness. When in front of 1,300 fans here at the Matt Busby Centre, that may be our biggest attendance, which is uh, very fitting. Billy Kirkwood says, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to We Are Wrestling. We're back again. And what a show we have for you tonight. This gentleman has went all out to give you the wrestling card that you could only dream of. McGuinness says, Billy mate, I have tried my best to hopefully provide the best entertainment for these fans, but I must say, what a stacked card we have tonight. Three titles are on the line. It's a big one. Billy Kirkwood then says, we have Becky Lynch from the WWE. She's challenging the best in the galaxy, Nikki Storm. That will be for the We Are Wrestling Women's Championship. McGuinness says we also have the NAK's Chris Renfrew and BT Gunn and they're going to defend the Tag Team Championships against the Sumerian Death Squads, Tommy End and Michael Dante and the Tag Team, the former champions, Noam Dar and Kenny Williams. And of course that is inside a TLC match. I think that's a, a pretty good stipulation there. And then Billy Kirkwood says the big one. Mikey Whiplash defends against four other men in a five-way ladder match for the We Are Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Grado, Wolfgang, Dave Mastiff and Marty Scurll all get an opportunity tonight for the big one. So D-38 as we start the show off with a bang. Get everybody hyped up for which will hopefully be a, a very good show. So we start off with two of the best wrestlers pretty much on the planet at the moment. In a match that had an average crowd reaction and some decent in-ring action. We had the aerial assassin Will Ospreay. Defeat Zack Sabre Jr. in 6 minutes and 36 by pinfall via a 6.30 splash. Let's get a D42 rating. Good win there for Osprey. No skill improvements to speak of here, but really just putting on a match with two really good athletes and a very good rating. D42. Good opener. We then hear some music that we haven't heard for a long, long time. It is the return of the Joker, Pavel Kirkin, due to public demand. You know who you are. Since you requested him, here he is. And he cuts a promo. Remember he couldn't speak English? He, I checked. He can now. So he says, surprised to see me, are we? For months now I have been cast aside, left in the lurches of the backstage area with no plans to use me. I didn't speak English, so they saw no use of me. But now I stand before you fluent in English and with a plan to become vengeful. I am not here to just make up the numbers. I demand I get an opportunity to showcase to the world how mad and how talented I really am. So any man, any size, any beast, anyone, one of you come from the back and I'll show you what you've all been missing. So uh, a passionate promo there from Pavel Kirkin due to public demand and he ends up with saying Pavel rules. So you know who he's are. You ask for him. He's here. He gets a match. But who's going to step up and face Avil Kirkin? E minus twenty three. That's pretty good for him, uh, considering his previous work wasn't fantastic. Um, we'll see how he does. So who steps up and takes Pavel Kirkin's challenge? It is the Man Beast Rhino. In an extremely poor match, Rhino defeats Pavel Kirkin in two minutes and fifty one with a gore. Complete squash match. Sorry guys, had to be done. E plus 35, so that's not too bad. Pavel Kirkin was off his game. No skill improvements. Uh, just a little comedy angle there to give Pavel Kirkin the chance since the demand was there. Next up, we've got Katrina Waters. She's in the ring waiting for Keely Ray for their big important anything goes matchup 
next. We see Kaylee Ray walking backstage before she's attacked by the minions of Katrina Waters in the forms of Christina Von Eri and Buggy Nova. The attack though doesn't go to plan as Buggy misses her punch and Kaylee Ray sends her flying into the interview set. Christina puts up a good fight though, gets getting a slight upper hand towards Kaylee Ray. But Kaylee ducks a punch from her and then hits her with a short arm clothesline, sending Christina flying. Basically then, Kaylee Ray dusts herself down, she heads to Gorilla, and she's getting ready to head out for this very important match coming up next. Disappointingly it was an F plus 12, but that is because they are not very over in the UK. Uh, brought the crowd's mood down, it's one of those things. But the match itself had an average crowd reaction and some decent in re in action. Kaylee Ray defeats Katrina Waters in 12.35 by pinfall with a reverse code red. D-38, pretty good from these women. No skill improvements to work on. Um, all I can say is hopefully we get better ratings in TW 2016 when it comes to the women's athletes. But overall, still happy with that. And Kaylee Ray ends the feud with a victory. And of course, it maybe got a bit better if it wasn't a hardcore based match. But I felt that was the best way to go with Katarina's character. We then had a match that had an average crowd reaction but featured terrible wrestling. BT Gunn and Chris Renfrew defeat Noam Dar and Kenny Williams and the Sumerian Death Squad in a TLC match in 14 minutes and 40 when Chris Renfrew retrieved the titles. BT Gunn and Chris Renfrew make defence number one of the We Are Wrestling Tag Team Championships. This drew an E plus 32, I'm assuming because it was not a normal match. Obviously it was kind of hardcore based as well, weapons, spots needed. Uh, that's going to be detrimental to the rating, but got a team like um, the NAK, you got to put them in some sort of stipulation type matchup. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. No improvements, but it served its purpose regarding the storyline. So Michael Dante is not happy. It was a high spot based. Now there was Renfrew or Tommy End. The rest not so much. They have done it. Chris Renfrew has steered the New Age Click to successfully defending their We Are Wrestling Tag Team Championships. Over the teams of Noam Dar, Kenny Williams and the Sumerian Death Squad. He's draped over the top of the ladder, covered in blood, with the two championship belts in hand. BT Gun slowly makes it his way back into the ring and starts to try and help Chris Renfrew down. They slowly get up towards the camera side of the ring and they lift the titles up. Slowly, before Renfrew shouts, we are the best and this effing proves it. E28, because again, they're not particularly over, which is disappointing, because in the UK, I'd say they pretty much are. No skill improvements, and the NAK rules supreme. But will they capture the World Champion, or the Heavyweight Championship, sorry, later on tonight? That is obviously still to come. Next up, we have a promo from the local hero, Joe Hendry. He says, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it is your local hero, Joe Hendry, taking on the Iron Man, Joe Coffey. And what should be a battle of two modern day gladiators. A friendship that ended because of one man's bitterness. Now fair enough, I was getting all the wins, I was getting the pinfalls and gaining a lot of momentum. But at the end of the day, we were a tag team and we were on course to become the We Are Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Joe Coffey didn't see it that way and he didn't want to share the spotlight. And that's okay, because now it's up to me to show him that this is my spotlight and that my star shines brighter than his. I hope you're ready, Joe, because this is going to be a war. Very good promo from Joe Hendry there, a D plus 51, exactly the kind of ratings he should be getting. Um, I think he's someone, especially in the TW 2016 mods, that will be um, one of those ones where if you put faith in him, he'll, the sky's the limit, I think. He could be a, a big, big player going forward if mod makers are, are kind to him. The match itself had an average crowd reaction and some decent in-ring action as Joe Hendry defeats Joe Coffey in 8 minutes and 28 by pinfall with the STO. This gathers an E35, or an E plus 35. Nothing overly to talk about in the match, again just putting Joe Hendry over. He would have been in line for a big push going forward. And then TW 2016 came out and tarnished all those hopes. Next up, in a match that had an average crowd reaction and some decent in reaction, Nikki Storm defeated Becky Lynch in 9.57. By pinfall after using a foreign object, Nikki Storm makes defence number two of the We Are Wrestling Women's Championship. D41, 
I feel like um, realistically that could be a lot higher rating if it wasn't based on uh, overness. I'm hoping it happens one day in the WWE when Nikki just being uh, signed to the company. Uh, she obviously got to be in NXT for a wee while, but um, I'd love to see this match. I, I really would. No skill improvements though. Uh, overall, only negatives was inconsistency from Becky in the length of the match, but uh, to stellar women's athletes. It's all over, and via dubious means, the best in the galaxy, Nikki Storm, has prevailed in defending her We Are Wrestling Women's Championship against WWE superstar Becky Lynch. Becky looks a little bit angry, but now it's finished, she's accepted it, and it was an unbelievable match by two of Europe's best female talents. She reluctantly offer, offers a handshake to Nikki Storm, who herself is hesitant, but they shake as they know they have done women's wrestling proud. So E-19, again, not the most over, but uh, basically I feel like in TW 2016, hopefully it's a lot kinder to women's wrestling. I know they're going to change a thing where eye candy may, may not matter as much. It's going to be interesting to see how that, that works out. Um, but I'm really hoping with the whole push WWE has with the women's division in real life that I can not only replicate that, but in the different kind of mods I'm going to be using and the different um, YouTube series or just even casual play, that women's divisions are going to be taken really seriously. And my aim is, at one point, especially in my WWE save that I'll be doing offline, to women main event WrestleMania. That's the aim, because I'm aiming to do a save from the start to the finish, till the next game in the cycle, and I want women in main event in WrestleMania. But we'll speak about that more at the end of this episode. Since it's our final of our show, here's an over-the-top entrance by the man himself. It's yourself. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Grado. E26 from Grado. Uh, just really a, a filler angle there, but Grado gets the big entrance before the 5-way ladder match. And then about that had good crowd and some decent in-ring action, Gradle gets his moment as he defeats Mikey Whiplash, Wolfgang, Marty Scurll and Dave Mastiff in a ladder match in 18 minutes and 39 seconds. And Gradle retrieved the title from the top, uh, obviously from the ladder. Uh, Gradle wins the We Are Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. The reason I put the title on Gradle is because this was all hitting towards a Gradle win. Obviously I was going to build it and build it and build it. But with TW 2016 being announced, I had to kind of rush it to him getting his moment here. But the series was always going to end with Gradle as champion. But D plus 52, happy with that. Especially in some sort of stipulation match. Good effort from all five guys. Disappointingly, nobody gained uh, any work improvements in the full show. That is what it is. A um, couple of negatives there. Psychology, gimmicks and stuff like that. But I'm happy. Great effort from these gentlemen. And we end the show with it's all over and the biggest shock of the century has happened. Grado has overcame the odds by John Cena and climbed the ladder to retrieve the We Are Wrestling Heavyweight Championship by defeating four other superstars. He slowly makes his way back down the ladder with the championship belt in hand and there are bodies and ladders everywhere. It's carnage. Skrull has been helped to the back by referees while Grado gets to the ropes, tries to pick himself up he is visibly crying by this momentous occasion. He slowly gets himself up to climb the turnbuckles, and we now have confetti pouring from the sky, despite us having a very limited budget. The show, the show ends with Grado lifting his newly won championship, with the confetti pouring down over him. All I can say is, guys, it's been a great journey we are wrestling. It's been a very short journey, because obviously the... Very quick turnaround for TW 2016, but um, all I can say is thank you for watching the series. It's been hopefully a good chance to learn some of the British characters, and um, certainly guys I've learned a good bit about during the series because I've had to research their work. Um, obviously, because I went to Mania and I got to catch the likes of Evolve and, and WrestleCon. Uh, I got to learn a lot more, so I got to learn a good bit about the the Marty Scurll villain character, which. Uh, Phenomenal character. As I say, what I'm hoping to do, and I'll just keep playing the game while we do this because I'm, I'm going to recycle and, and see how we do in terms of finance as well. E48, popularity up in one region, that's cool. I'm not even going to bother with the, the post show speech because we're just going to 
play the game live basically now. But see, the plan is, the first week the, the demo and the beta is out, I'll be starting a save either in January or February with the WWE, just really to try things out. But I may put up like a video, uh, just maybe showing a few new features, uh, maybe showing stuff like how to do custom angles. I know that's been asked for before. It's really simple the way I do it. Whether it's the right way or not uh, remains to be seen. But I'll, I'll be certainly doing that. And I'll be doing um, a WWE save offline, starting with um, Felicia's April database. Unless there's a, a late May database out, um, just before TW is released on the second, the full game, we're doing WWE offline, but I say I'm going to try and take the save from straight away. That's why I'm hoping that there's no too much difference if you're converting a database. Hopefully that works fine. And I'm going to take it all the way through until the end of the cycle, hopefully. I'm saying that now. There's a good chance I probably won't, but I would really like to try and do that. Uh, as far as YouTube is concerned, um, it's definitely going to be a YouTube series. I'm still never one of those guys that's most confident in my writing ability. You see I make a lot of mistakes typing, spelling mistakes, punctuation mistakes. That's why I've never done a written dynasty. So um, we'll continue to do a, new, we'll do a new series starting probably the... I don't know if Tuesday will give me enough time to sign people and get people booked. Um, but hopefully we might have a video up for the Tuesday the 3rd. If not, it'll be the Friday. Um, I might just do a video looking at people are going to sign. I kind of want to keep it a secret in that way, so when they debut, get that bit of a shock factor. I don't want to sign too many people, because we're going to be TNA. The money's not going to be great. It's going to be a massive challenge. Um, we could have seen ourselves have a very short run at TNA, just because of um, the situation they're in. But uh, I just want to try and rival the series I'd done previously. Um, the only other thing I'll add is... The WWE save I'm doing offline, I may look to record the pay-per-views and put them up when I do them, but that would be like every so often with no particular date. Um, the other series I'm planning to start. Uh, I don't want to go ahead and do too many series, it's, I felt at times. We, can, uh, we are wrestling and at the same time as the, the WWE stuff. Three videos a week was a bit too much because I was changing um, booking thoughts. I feel if I keep booking the same show, I might, it might be a bit more fluid, so hopefully I can get more episodes out. So we're going to stick at two episodes just now for the TNA save a week. Uh, if it gets to more, great. Um, I'll happily do that. If not, it'll probably stick to the Tuesday-Friday format we're at. Uh, any pay-per-views for the WWE will just be whenever. But that's the plan. I can only wait and see how long it takes me to book a show in the game. It might be quite quick. It might take a while. Uh, it really just depends, to be honest. But I'm, I'm really hyped for TW. I've been excited for a good while. Um, Bit frustrating though that I didn't manage to do any pre booking for TW 2016 when I was away. Uh, I fell asleep on both my flights instead of getting my notepad out and dotting them out. So basically, again, when TW comes out uh, on the Monday, the 2nd, I'll be starting storylines and signings from scratch basically. Uh, so it might be a bit rushed to start with. But the good thing is, we'll give me a lot of confidence, we'll, I'll know characters a lot better. There'll be none of this Shinsuke Nakamura, it'll be Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, I'll know a lot about his character, like I'd seen one match from him before we introduced him to TNA. Now I know he's the King of Strong Style, I know all about him. Uh, and various other wrestlers that maybe didn't know enough about their characters, you might be looking and go, what is this guy doing with them? Hopefully, you know, I have a better idea of them, uh, and hopefully it's presented better. It'll probably be a similar layout and similar format, I've never been a guy that likes booking it on the YouTube series because sometimes I like to just chill uh, and sometimes it can take me two or three hours to book a show just because I like chilling with music and changing my mind and, and rethinking stuff as well. But um, the main thing is it won't be like last time where it took us 80 episodes to actually get custom angles and it took us about 30 episodes to learn how to put window over window. So hopefully there'll be no hiccups along the way. Uh, if there is a hiccup, it'll be in-game, and hopefully we can all learn TW 2016 together, like we will learn 2013 together, especially in the opening days where um, you guys especially really helped me learn the game, and I felt it make me, made me a better booker, and I'm hoping the mistakes I made in that time uh, help make other people better bookers. As I say, thank you for watching, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, all I can say is, if you want to keep watching more TW, if you're hyped for 2016, uh, if you're a football manager fan that's tuning in and watching this, and quite curious to get TW 2016, see so the game goes live on the the demo. Sorry, goes live on the 25th Monday, 25th I believe. 
um, between 4 p.m. GMT and 10 p.m. GMT. The game will fall a week later, same times, but um, the 2nd of May. Raydog Software website is your best bet. Well, that's where you need to download the game from. That's where you get the e-license from. Uh, they've got a, mass, well, a massive community, but that is the, the biggest TW community. You get the likes of mods there, because everybody will be converting 2013 mods unless they're using the Cornellverse. So definitely check out that. Uh, they've got so many guides in terms of um, developer's diary, which will help you learn the game, uh, and various other things regarding help with your booking decisions. Or even if there's somewhere a bit confused by the game, there'll be people there. And uh, for tech support, you know, you've, you've got the guy that makes the game, Adam Ryland, is on the forum, so he'll happily help you with uh, any problems like that. Apart from that, definitely another place I'd recommend is the Fantasy Bookers section on Reddit. It, everybody just likes to post their shows up there, whether it's written, whether it's um, a YouTube show, whether it's pictures, whether it's just general, I had an idea regarding certain booking in a certain period of time. Honestly, I'd definitely check it out there. Great set of guys there. So many bookers that um, you know, just honestly check out their work. It is a really fantastic community and uh, definitely get involved in and get your stuff up there as well, honestly. Just uh, the more people we can get involved in this, the, the better. But apart from that, just uh, one final um, shout out before I end my video. And that's just basically say a big thank you to Total Team Talk to Rick. Um, if it wasn't for him and doing his series, being an FM guy, well, okay, this guy's this guy's doing this TW stuff. I've played DWR. If I didn't clock onto his videos and really enjoy his content, uh, I wouldn't have made the jump from EWR to, to TW. So um, he deserves uh, a massive, massive shout out. Um, he is pretty much the messiah of TW to me, anyway, because of the way I get introduced to it. I mean, there's so many other great bookers. I'm not going to name any names because you always miss someone out and everybody knows who they are. I speak to so many guys about TW, whether it be for Escape, for Twitter, you name it. As I say, definitely get involved. Fantasy Bookers on Reddit, a good way to introduce yourself to a lot of bookers and the same with the Grey Dog software forums. But apart from that, guys, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you for 2016. Keep it tight.